Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of Stalingrad, short game review. This puts you right there at the on the Eastern Front during the Battle of Stalingrad, and this does have a single player, and it's quite good. But the you know the multiplayer is the focus. The single player is sort of the the training ground, and it puts historical context to the levels, which are the same single player and multiplayer. Single player is literally essentially offline play for multiplayer. You you know you still come back to life, you know respawn style, and the you know. Everyone else is a bot. You know, they're not scripted to, yeah. And yeah, it, the the single player does really well at putting it into context and really putting you right there, which the game as a whole does really well at in general. With you know the the single player, there are twelve levels to the two campaigns, each access and allied. And the the twelve levels are divided into eight campaigns, and the end of a campaign will typically mean you know hearing a letter be read aloud, a letter from someone on the Eastern Front, and they are really you know gripping and and horrifying. The game as a whole is essentially a war simulator in the form of a first-person shooter. It the the realism is tremendous, and if if you aren't really looking for a war simulator, this probably isn't the game for you. It does give something of an opening to you know those who want a little bit more of a mainstream game without actually com compromising the vision that you know is clear in in both this and the first with three rule sets from least to most mainstream and from hardest to I'm not sure I want to say easiest but least you know almost off-puttingly difficult classic realism and action and you know the first one really didn't open up to anyone but the niche and this one really serves the niche but also gives a little bit more of a, you know, you can play this without having, you know, without wanting to dive completely into just this war simulation, you know, interactive documentary kind of thing. Now, the, the game is severely addictive, but also really, really difficult. The, the tutorials and the streamlining, somewhat streamlining of controls help but are still not enough. It, m many people are going to find this just prohibitively difficult and be scared off, as I frankly almost was at first, by the sheer amount of details to keep track of and tools at your disposal that you do have to... you have to use them right for them to be at all effective, but then they can be extremely effective. Some easy to understand, it's easy to communicate. Examples of this would be the sniper and the machine gun. If you use them at the wrong place or time, they're useless. But at the right place or time, they are devastating to the enemy forces. The game has several additional game modes. In addition to territory, which is essentially domination, there is Firefight, which has no capture of territories, but is set in all the same levels, and is just a more fast-paced, it's essentially team deathmatch. Then you have Countdown, which is territory, but with more of a time limit on it, and a linear progression. If once, once a territory has been captured in Countdown, there's no getting it back, you know, and no losing it but you also only have three minutes to each objective and yeah and it'll reset to three minutes whenever you start a new objective and the you have search and destroy which is essentially counter-strike kind of you know one team has to plant a bomb the other team has to prevent that bomb from going off 
And finally, there's campaign, which is essentially territories, but the winning team then gets to vote on being attacking or defending, and what territory on the Eastern Front to fight in, and you know, for the next round, which literally means you know the winner of of such, which you know obviously can take a while. The winner of such a game has conquered the Eastern Front, which certainly is something to write home about. The graphics are amazing. They, the the level of detail is tremendous, and there are numerous striking visuals from the Eastern Front, such as houses that have been burnt to the ground so that only the chimney remains, because that one would not burn. And yeah, and and, and some of the maps are in general are are in fact literally recreations of actual locations such as the Red October Factory and Pavlov's house. The I suppose that pretty well covers it. If you like this review and one more detailed one, the link will be in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.